Good morning, students. This is Miss Monroe, your visual art teacher. And today I am going to talk a little bit about the element of texture. Um, texture is the adjective of the art world. It pretty much is how artists describe and show how something looks and feels. Now there are two categories in texture. You have actual texture where an artist will take an object, for example, this corrugated cardboard, and maybe they'll do either a crayon rubbing or they'll print it or they'll find different objects to create impressions and looks in their artwork. The other category uh, is what we call implied texture. Now implied texture is when artists use another element, usually line or shapes, to imply, to recreate what something would look like texture-wise without you actually using that texture. So if we were to actually touch it, it would be smooth, but from far away, it would look like a woven basket or it would look like an orange. So I've written some adjectives, like some describing words. So we have something that's prickly, something that's fuzzy, scaly, furry, sticky, slimy, rough, bumpy. I made an orange peel because orange peels were kind of different. They're like not white in there. And I have like bark from a wood, like wood from a tree. You, I want you to think in your head, can you think of other textures that I don't have on here? Because I can think of a quite a few. For example, feathery, like what would a bird feel like if you were to touch it? Or maybe what if you were to touch something that was felt, would felt really feel furry and fuzzy or would it feel like something different? And how would you recreate that look in your artwork? I want you to think and be creative. So, but here's just a few. Prickly, it's sort of like a cactus or hedgehog. So you have a couple different types of marks, usually like a short straight stick line or a little like arrows fuzzy like a sheep or fuzzy like you have a ball of cotton fuzz from the inside of your stuffed animals and it's usually like you would use a little loopy swirly circular motions scaly that's where you get some different types of scales you have fish scales you have snake scales you have like horny toad scales they have different marks they look different you have like little arrows that are inter and overlapping you have crisscross motions. You have the little C's for the fish scales. Different ways. Look at some pictures of some scales up close and you will get some really, really cool ideas. Furry. Now you have long fur and usually it's like long and flowy. Like if you have a long haired cat or dog, you have short fur, like a short haired cat or a hamster. You have slimy, sticky. I just kind of like, it's like droopy, goopy. Ugh. Um, rough. Rough's like a rock. Rough is like a brick. And you have different, you have like short staccato marks and you have this stippling happening. Because it's not smooth. Something smooth is just going to look like blank paper. Bumpy. Bumpy is similar to rough, but bumpy's got some bumps. Orange peel. Orange peel is like in between all three of these. That's why I gave it its own mark. Because I had to really look at an orange and I had to really think about it. And the next thing is like bark. Different trees have different types of bark and they make a different type of texture. So go out and look at a tree. Go out and look at a rock. Maybe even do an actual texture test. So maybe you can see, oh, this is what it would really look like if I were to do a crayon rubbing. Let's see how I can recreate that with just a pen or a pencil. So those are some of my textures that I came up with. That was off to the side. Now, 
what we are going to do today is we are going to do a traditional art exercise. You've probably seen this handout before. It is called the textured hand. What you need for this project is a pen or a pencil. Because I know it's really hard to see, I am going to be using a marker. And what we're going to do is we are going to be making this project. So you need to take a hand, preferably the one you don't write with, but you can also borrow someone else's hand. And you are going to put it down on the paper. You do want some space around it and you do want to have your wrist. So you're not going to start at your hand. You're going to start at the bottom where your wrist is. And we're going to, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do with that later. So you need to make sure your fingers are spread out nice and wide. And you're going to trace. Once again, I said I'm tracing with a black marker. But I would prefer you to either use a pencil or a pen. So here's my wrist. There's my hand. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend our hand is bursting out of something. Now it could be bursting out of the water. It could be bursting out of the ground like a zombie. It could, I'm trying to think what else could you have some, oh, it's like bursting through a paper wall. Now, if you want it to look like it's coming out of the ground, you're going to make some zigzag jagged lines. You're going to jump over your hand. And then you're going to make, using the hatch marks, you're going to draw directly down. And you're just going to make it all the way down straight lines. Because then it creates this sense that your hand is coming up and the ground is going down. The other way I kind of like to do this is I kind of like to pretend that it is bursting out of something. So do that. I'm also going to use a, but it's going to be more like a wave. So I'm going to start here. And then I'm going to come over here. And I close it off. And now it looks like it's either it's a feathery sleeve so make sure it doesn't look like a feather sleeve. I'm gonna put a ground line. And I'm gonna follow the curve. Still hatch marks, but instead of straight hatch marks, these hatch marks follow the line. And there you go. But only on the ones that are here because these ones are in front, they're overlapping. Remember that word, overlapping means when you have something that's on top of another creating space. Now, I have it, it's popping through a box. That's pretty much what I think of this one. And what you need to do is you need to pick five fingers, oh, four fingers and a thumb. You need to pick five textures. So I want to do furry. That's that one. I'm going to pick prickly. I love cactus or cacti. Sorry. I'm going to pick, I already have furry. Hmm. Rough, like a rock. I'm going to pick scaly and fuzzy. And I'm going to switch to time lapse so we can speed this up. And there you have it. I've made my very own reference for implied texture, my texture hand. And as I said, you can choose different ones. This one, okay, so I did bark and I have bumpy and then I had it coming out of the ground. The important thing is you do your very best. 
And as I said, there's different types of textures. Maybe there's some that I don't have on here. I want you to try your best, have fun, and hopefully you'll share it with me. Thank you, and hopefully I will have another video up very soon. Have a great day.